Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy. The Gallo-Romans colonized the land of France. This is about the history of France, how the Aboriginal groups that lived in France were descendants of the son of Japheth, who was the son of Noah. Eventually, these groups were pushed out of France by the Celts, who were not Japhetic, nor were they native of Europe. In turn, the Romans invaded France and moved out the Celts. This is the history of that story. Gallo-Roman culture was a consequence of the Romanization of Gauls under the rule of the Roman Empire. It was characterized by the Gaulish adoption or adaptation of Roman culture, language, morals, and way of life in a uniquely Gaulish context. The Western European nation Gaul is modern France. The region of Gaul around the time of 58 BC, modern day France. To the left is a map of ancient Gaul. To the right, we have a map of modern day France. Ancient Gaul and modern day France. The Romans divided Gaul into five parts. Gallia Longinensis. Originally, it was a division of Gallia Celtica. Gallia Belgica. Gallia Cisalpina. Gallia Naboninesis and Gallia Aquitania. Gaul was a region of Western Europe, first clearly described by the Romans. Encompassing present-day France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, and parts of Switzerland, Germany, and northern Italy. According to Julius Caesar, who took control of the region on behalf of the Roman Republic, Gaul was divided into three parts. Gallia, Celtica, Belgica and Aquitania. Gaelic Wars The Gaelic Wars were waged between 58 and 50 BC by the Roman general Julius Caesar 
against the peoples of Gaul, present-day France, Belgium, Germany, and Switzerland. Gaelic, Germanic, and British tribes fought to defend their homelands against an aggressive Roman campaign. The wars culminated in the decisive Battle of Alesia in 52 BC, in which a complete Roman victory resulted in the expansion of the Roman Republic over the whole of Gaul. Though the Gaelic military was as strong as the Romans, the Gaelic tribes' internal division eased victory for Caesar. Gaelic chieftain Vercingetorix attempt to unite the Gauls under a single banner came too late. Caesar portrayed the invasion as being a preemptive and defensive action. But historians agree that he fought the wars primarily to boost his political career and to pay off his debts. Still, Gaul was of significant military importance to the Romans. Native tribes in the region, both Gaelic and Germanic, had attacked Rome several times. Conquering Gaul allowed Rome to secure the natural border of the Rhine River. Gaelic Wars Vercingetorix throws down his arms at the feet of Julius Caesar, 1899, by Lionel Noel Royer. Vercingetorix, born around 80 BC and died 46 BC, was a Gaelic king and chieftain of the Arvini tribe who united the Gauls in a failed revolt against Rome forces during the last phase of Julius Caesar's Gaelic Wars. After surrendering to Caesar and spending almost six years in prison, he was executed in Rome. Vercingetorix, gold stater of Vercingetorix. This depiction is idolized and symbolic. Is this painting an accurate depiction of Vercingetorix and the Gaelic warriors that fought against Roman legions? Vercingetorix. The Romans have been fighting the Gauls, the continental Celts, and present-day France for several years. Most of Gaul was under Roman control. Vercingetorix, 72 to 46 BC, approximately. His name means King of the Warriors, was very unhappy with the situation and the Romans will soon have to deal with this troublesome rebel. He assembled allies from all over Gaul and led a violent campaign to free it from the Romans. Vercingetorix did not succeed, though. In a hill fort at Elysia, he and his men was besieged and Vercingetorix saw no other way out but 
to surrender. Taken to Rome, Vercingetorix died a few years later in captivity. He was properly strangled during a public showing. In the last couple of centuries, Vercingetorix was made a symbol of French nationalism. How should we picture the appearance of Vercingetorix? His direct opponent, Caesar, wrote a full report on the war in Gaul, but he willfully mentions nothing about the nature or the appearance of Vercingetorix, though they did meet in person. We, therefore, must turn to other sources. In general, the Celts or Celts were known to wear colored trousers and cloaks. The men often had long, had half long hair, lime washed and combed backwards and drooping mustaches. In addition to this hairstyle, a marble statue shows the very characteristic talk neck ring that was common among the Celts. A limestone statue represents a Celtic warrior who's wearing a similar talk with a cloak, trousers, a coat of mail, which is probably a Celtic invention, and a belt. This man carries a long sword and a large oval-shaped shield, weapons that are familiar from archaeological findings. Various types of Celtic helmets were found as well, but these were seldom depicted in contemporary art. Coins that contain an image of the face of Vercingetorix are unreliable as sources. These images are primarily idolized, symbolic representations. If historians find this image unreliable, we should look for historical records that describe the Celts. So in search of the history of the Celts in history, we will first go to the complete work of Josephus. Now, they were the grandchildren of Noah, in honor of whom names were imposed on the nations by those that first seized upon them. Japhet, the son of Noah, had seven sons. They inhabited so that beginning at the mountain Taurus, and Amanus, they proceeded along Asia, as far as the river Tanis, the Don River in Europe, and along Europe to Cadiz and Spain, and setting themselves on the lands which they light upon, which none had inhabited before, they called the names, or they called the nations by their own names or the countries by their own names. For Gomer founded those whom the Greeks now call Galatians or Gauls, but were then called Gomerites. Gaul was the land of Gomer. So next we could turn to the net Bible because the assumption was the Celts were Gomer 
children of Japheth. But that is not the case. But in order to prove that, let's turn to the Net Bible to show why there was some confusion about the identity of the Celts and Gomer in France. The Table of Nations, chapter 10, verse 1. This is the account of Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Sons were born to them after the flood. The sons of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, Madai, and Javan. But all we need to understand is the sons of Japheth, his firstborn, were Gomer. And in the note 15, Gomer was the ancestor of the Sumerians. Sumerians were not the children of Japheth or Gomer. There was some confusion about the identity of the Celts because the Celts was living in the lands of Gomer. Celts are not indigenous Europeans. They are not natives to Europe. Glimpses of our Celtic ancestors by E. Wormhurst. House of Israel. It is necessary to explain that the writer has inferred that the Celtic tribes, whom the Romans found in possession of Britain, were descendants of Asiatic immigrants and of Hebrew descent. Professor Rawlingson says that the Celts who were the first people who arrived in Europe from Asia, their birthplace, pushed out the sons of Japheth, and also that a people known as Sumeri or Gemeri, Sumeri are the Sumerians, attained to power in Western and Eastern Europe between B.C. 800 and 600. The Celts pushed Japheth out of Europe, out of France. Celts are Iron Age Europeans. They are not Stone Age Europeans or Bronze Age Europeans. Japheth are what the historians call Stone Age Europeans and Bronze Age Europeans. Celts are Iron Age Europeans. For more information on the Celts and the history of Europe and France, we're going to look into the history from the book Europe Before Rome by T. Douglas Price. Europe Before Rome, a site by site tour of the stone, bronze, and iron ages. The chronology for the iron age in much of Europe is portrayed in figure 6.2, the image on the left. The Iron Age begins earlier in the Mediterranean area, circa 900 BC. So our history is dealing with the time period between 700 to 600 BC. That's around the beginning of the Iron Age for Europe. This is the period of the Assyrian captivity for Israel. Judah and Israel was taken captive by the Assyrians. But Judah 
left a remnant in the land of Israel. Wow. All of the northern kingdom was taken away. Rome and its empire expanded rapidly, conquering much of Western Europe in a few decades before the beginning of the Common Era and Britain around AD 43, effectively ending the prehistoric Iron Age in these parts of the continent. The arrival of iron coincides with the emerging identities of what are often called Celtic society around 700 BC was the emergence of Celtic societies in Europe. The term Celtic is a generic rubric for the various diverse societies in Central Europe who spoke related languages. Over time, some of these groups moved to the west and south across the Rhine and Alps where they were eventually encountered by Caesar and the Romans, who lumped them together as the Gauls or Celts or Celts. Celtic culture has its origin in the Iron Age of Europe, but the term has many other connotations. So there were people in Europe and France before the Celts, this period in time would be called the Stone Age and the Bronze Age. The Celts are newcomers into Europe. They entered Europe around the time of the Iron Age. Historians divide European history in three divisions. The Stone Age, which was a time when Japheth lived in Europe. Number two, the Bronze Age is another period in which Japheth lived in Europe, France, Britain. The third part, the Iron Age in which other people emigrated into Europe in permanent colonies. This chart lists early peoples in Europe, a Stone Age period and a Bronze Age period. Those are the periods of Japheth. And then we come upon a period in time, Iron Age Celts, around 600 BC. The Celts were an immigrant group or people group from Asia, not Europe. The next period in time is Romano British or Roman colonies in Britain, but also it includes Roman colonies in France. Historians divide European history Stone Age, Bronze Age, and Iron Age. Celts were Iron Age. Europeans. Bronze Age and Stone Age Europeans were Japhetic people. Gomer. This is a color coded map of Europe before the Romans conquered France. And the peach color are the territories inhabited by Celts who pushed Japheth out of Europe and occupied these territories. The British Isles, Spain, France, Germany, Eastern Europe, and the purple were the lands occupied by the Romans. And the green are other people, groups in Europe at the time. Who were the Celts? The Celts were a collection of peoples who spoke 
Celtic languages who lived during the Iron Age between 600 BC and 43 AD. The Celts are thought to have begun with the Hallstatt culture, which existed in the Bronze Age and into the Iron Age. The Celts spread across Europe. They spread across Europe, living in areas including France, Italy, Germany, Poland, Spain, and Britain. The Celts pushed out Jephet and spread across Europe. The exact origins and history of the Celts is debated amongst historians. Professor Rawlison pointed out the history of the Celts. They were Hebrews. Because the Celts did not have written historical records, much of their history is lost. And what we know of their culture has been pieced together from surviving examples of their art. As such, there is a lot of uncertainty about the history of the Celts. The Celts were also divided into groups such as the Gauls, the Britons, the Gaels, the Celtiberians, the Galatians, and others, which makes it more difficult to define the Celts as a culture because there is a lot of diversity amongst them. Diversity. Think of the term the Black Celts. The Celts were often in conflict with the Romans who invaded many Celtic lands during their conquest of Europe, including Britain. The Romans and the Celtic people groups fought many wars. Celtic people were pushed back to Ireland. So after the Celts pushed Japhet out of Europe, the Romans pushed the Celtic people out of certain parts of Europe. Celtic people were pushed back to Ireland and other islands of the British Isles. Much of the recorded history of the Celts at the time comes from the Romans. So we have to digest this information that Celtic people groups were known for their diversity. So the term Black Celts will make sense because of this Celtic diversity. Where did the Celts live? The Celts inhabited most of Europe by 300 BC, pushing out the Japhetic people. They took over those lands. And there was a hugely diverse range of different Celtic peoples inhabiting the continent. They were largely unopposed for decades because the Romans were busy expanding their territory to the south. However, in the first century BC, Julius Caesar began a campaign against the Celts and destroyed many of their civilizations on the mainland of Europe. In the book by T. Douglas Price, Europe Before Rome, a site-by-site tour of the Stone, Bronze, and Iron Age. In the book, these people are not identified as the children at Japhet, but 
this image from the book shows the Aboriginal Europeans from the so-called Stone Age. And these are the children of Noah's son, Japheth. The Aboriginal and natives of Europe who were pushed out by the Celts. They lived in Europe during the Stone Age and the Bronze Age. If you or I went back in time, we could actually communicate quite easily with this people group. The historians of this time, of our time, of modern time, know exactly what language these aborigines of Europe spoke. That will be revealed in the next video. The language of the aboriginals, native Europeans. Next.